Good afternoon. My name is Elgene Verdutt. I want to welcome everyone here to the house of the Lord this afternoon. As we come on a serious note and also on a light note, to celebrate the life of Harold Craven. <clears throat> When Sherilyn asked me if I would officiate and plan this service, I told her it would be very hard, but she had every confidence that I could do it, and I would ask your prayers that we can share in this together, because that's the way Harold would have liked it. I'd like to start with a... <clears throat> scripture that I found that made me think of, of Harold in so many ways it comes from the Song of Solomon in the King James Bible, beginning with verse 11. For lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. I wondered how many of us here have heard the voice of a turtle dove this spring, and I wagered that very few of us had, unless maybe some of us have been out mushroom hunting early, and, you, and you've heard the voice of a turtle dove. But I imagined it was very quiet, much like the voice of Harold, a very quiet, quiet person. And it's funny, as you ponder and think about various things that come to your mind, you, you think about the meaning of life and uh, preparing for a, a service such as this that both memorializes and celebrates the happy things, the good things, the important things of, of Harold Craven. And I was reminded of my grandmother, Clark. She had uh, 12 children. So she had lots of grandchildren. And she often rocked them and, and soothed them and comforted them. And I can still remember her saying, when they call the roll up yonder, I'll be there. Harold is there now. Because they've called his name and called him home. I have asked uh, Brother Floyd Hirsch, who has known Harold many more years than I have, if he would bring a special invocation to this assembly as we begin this celebration. Let us pray. O thou great God, Lord of heaven and of earth, we are gathered together on this occasion and in this season of the year. We come to show respect for you as the source of all goodness, all love, all mercy, and for Harold, whose life was in so many ways a reflection of what you are. We pray your good spirit to be with us now, even to hover over this assembly, to comfort, strengthen, and inspire our hopes as life goes on through your eternal world. We especially hold up to you, Sherilyn and her family, who have shared such a close-knit relationship with one so dear to us. So now we ask for your blessings of strength, hope, and healing upon the family, upon each one here gathered. So praise, honor, and glory 
be to thy name evermore. Amen. Music was very important to Harold. Early on in his life, he would play for his brothers to sing with him. As an adult, he took organ lessons from none other than Mike Quimby right here in Warrensburg. Uh, and we are honored that he could come today and play the organ today. We have three special songs that uh, Harold liked. And the first one I would ask, uh, as the uh, organ and the piano both play with this, if you all would stand and we could sing this together, it's hymn number 148 in your white hymnals, How Great Thou Art.
as we sang those last two verses, a spirit of quiet assurance just fled over me. And I hope it does you as well. On behalf of uh, Sherilyn and the whole Craven family, we want to thank each and every one of you for coming today. And I would like to turn to the scriptures now and share a couple with you. In the first book of Corinthians, in the 15th chapter, the 55th verse. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through which our Lord Jesus Christ. And the second verse comes from the uh, 11th chapter of John, beginning at the 24th verse. And Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And believest thou this? She said unto him, Yes, yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come unto the world. I yeah, really appreciated visiting with various folks at the meal we had before the, the visitation. I heard a couple other stories of Harold, and one I have to tell you was, was, was kind of funny. Um, I wondered how in the world could you talk about a man who was a, a lifetime banker and, and, and tell a, a, a good story. But you know, uh, someone told me one a while ago that was that was really great. Uh, Harold worked uh, with banks, and particularly the Citizens Bank here in Warrensburg for 37 years and retired from there. Um, anyway, after he had retired in 1993, uh, this just happened fairly recently, uh, when he was still getting around well, he went to the bank and uh, wanted to deposit something in the safe deposit box. They had a new young man that was an employee there, and uh, he had his defenses up uh, because this, this gentleman seemed to know everything about the bank. And he pulled out his key and he handed it to him and he said, that it's just down the stairs there and to the left, and it's, it's box number such and such. And the young uh, employee was quite alarmed. Uh, he thought somebody really casing out the bank, you know, for a robbery or something. But uh, finally, Harold broke into a smile and he said, I helped design this bank. I helped build this bank. And he did. Um, Harold had a great sense of humor that has uh, stayed with him to the very end. Um, just amazingly uh, sharp. He loved music, <clears throat> and I wanted to also share with you that he actually was on the music committee here at this church when it was built, uh, and uh, advocated hard for a new pipe organ to be built, and hence Mike. Uh, Quimby was contacted to help that happen, and it's the very organ that you're hearing today. <laughs> it was four years ago that uh, Harold, he had taken lessons on, on the organ. And he wanted to play a, a duet with Julie, and so they did. 
he played the organ and she played the piano. And uh, they're going to play that duet for you now with the song for Spacious Skies. <clears throat> Thank you, that was beautiful. I wanted to share with you the obituary that was carefully prepared and is included in your in your bulletin if you want to read along. Harold E. Craven of Warrensburg, Missouri died Friday, March 25th, 2016 at his home. He was born January 29, 1926, son of Earl and Mary Moffat Craven in Cowgill, Missouri. At the age of eight, he was baptized in the organized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which is now known as the Community of Christ. He was a member and served as an elder of the Warrensburg Community of Christ Church. Harold was married August 7, 1955, to Sherilyn Denning. They lived in Richmond for two years, and Warrensburg remained the re remainder of their 60 years of marriage. Harold graduated from the Chillicothe Business College with a degree in accounting, worked as an accountant for TWA. He went on to the University of Wisconsin at Madison Graduate School of Banking, Served 37 years in the Warrensburg as a banker and the secretary of the board at the Citizens Bank. Harold was 1958 charter member of the Warrensburg Kiwanis Club, serving 57 years with perfect attendance. That's a long time, folks. 
and with distinction, he also served as president, secretary. Um, from 1984 and 1985, he was lieutenant governor. Um, he served, he received the Distinguished International Kiwanis Fellow Foundation Award, the Hinkson Diamond, and the Zeller Diamond Awards. Harold also served as a volunteer at St. Luke's Hospital in Kansas City for 14 years. There he delivered flowers, mail, and through fellowship with many, many patients. He served on the Johnson County Historical Society Board. He and his wife, Dr. Sherilyn D. Craven, professor of math and actuarial science at the University of Central Missouri, traveled extensively in all 50 states and seven continents. They established scholarships at the Children's Mercy Hospital for nurses, at UCM for actuarial science students, and Jenny's athletes. They sponsored the new UCM Math Commons. Music was very important to Harold. He loved to play the piano and the organ. He was influential in planning for the Warrensburg Church's pipe organ that I mentioned to you earlier. He is survived by his wife, Sherilyn, of the home, a brother, Kenneth Craven, and his wife, Pat, of Liberty, Missouri, a sister-in-law, Loretta Craven, of Lee Summit. He's preceded in death by his parents, his brother Clifford R. Craven and sister Margaret Genevieve Smith. Now for our <clears throat> reflection and meditation together, I searched and searched and found this hymn it's a hymn of prayer, and I wanted to share it with you. I'm sorry I can't sing it for you, but it's called Without Seeing You. <clears throat> it uh, blends uh, thoughts of Jesus, of God, and likewise, I think, of, of Harold. Without seeing you, we love you. Without touching you, we embrace. Without knowing you, we follow. Without seeing you, we believe. We return to you deep within. Leave the past to the dust. Turn to you with tears and fasting. You are ready to forgive. The sparrow will find a home near to you, O oh God. Now happy we who dwell with you forever in your home, your house. Forever, forever we will sing to you of your goodness, O God, proclaiming to all the world of your faithfulness and love. For you are our shepherd. There is nothing that we need. In green pastures we will find our rest near the waters of peace. Without seeing you, we love you. Without touching you, we embrace. Without knowing you, we follow. Without seeing you, we believe. <clears throat> and now I'd ask the uh, three Smidley children who are serving also as junior honorary casket bearers, Kaylee, Brenna, and Cole, if you all could come forward. They'd like to share a reflection of Harold Craven. You want to use that, that microphone right there? It's fine. Um, man, we have a lot of memories with Harold. Uh, I never thought I'd get a privilege to stand up here and talk about someone so wonderful. But uh, He was part of our lives ever since we were younger. We moved in across from Willow Acres, across the street. So some of our earliest memories were with Harold. Um, we'd, he'd watch us ride our bikes through his driveway and go sledding. And he was just always so excited because he shared this love for kids that nobody else ever did. And he was always so compassionate toward us. And um, eventually we'd move out of that house. And we were still very close with the Cravens, always visiting on the holidays. 
And I remember very clearly about Harold how much he loved his Russell Stovers because every holiday we'd get him Russell Stovers for for a gift, and he'd always be surprised even though he knew what was coming. <laughs> but he he sure did love them. Um, if you've ever been to the Cravens' house around Christmas time, they have this guest room that's filled with uh, these Santa figurines. And he'd always get one for Christmas, and he'd always show them off to us, and he'd be so excited because he cherished them so much. And uh, we'd beg him to just hold them and play with them. And, of course, after some hesitation, he'd let us because that's just how selfless Harold was. He always put our needs and happiness before any of his. Um, when I was around eight or nine, Brennan and Cole and I, we all started taking piano lessons, and Needless to say, none of us were really good, but um, every time we went over, he'd beg us to play, and I remember he'd sit right there on the bench with us, and he'd watch so attentively as we played, and just be like, Mary had a little lamb every time, but still, after every time, he'd give you this big round of applause and make you feel like the greatest piano player ever, Um, because that's just how caring and loving Harold was. My sophomore year of high school, we had this cancer awareness game that we got to recognize Sherilyn at. And, of course, Harold and Sherilyn came to watch us play. Um, it wasn't a good game to remember. It's one of those you lose by 10 and just not a good game. But even afterwards, Harold makes you remember those good things you do, the little good things you do that you often forget when you're frustrated because he always sees the best in you. No matter how hard you try to see it, he always reminds you of all the good things you do. Um, we loved Harold greatly because of how compassionate and loving and outgoing he was, and he never failed to put a smile on your face, even if he had to be a little honorary to do it. Um, even when he was sick, I remember we recently went over, and he was constantly cold, and he'd complain about his feet being cold even with all these heat pads on it, and after reassuring him by feeling his feet that they were very toasty, he'd tell you, well, you don't know, they're not your feet. <laughs> So he'd always get a little chuckle out of you, no matter how he was feeling. Um, even when Harold did get sick, he was still just as loving as compassionate. Uh, Brenna and I got to go over and visit one time, and he was starting to forget things, so he kind of forgot who you were. Um, but even when he didn't know who we were, he still sat there and held our hands and told us how glad he was to see us and how much how much he appreciated us being there with him because that's just how caring Harold was. In Revelation 14, 13, John says, I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this, blessed are the dead who from now on, are on die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labors for their deeds follow them. Harold was a man of hard work and who made many sacrifices for all of us and for the benefits of others, and I know his wonderful deeds will continue to touch our lives and bring glory to his great name. But um, as I grow older, um, I can only hope that I can become the unselfish, devoted, understanding, thoughtful, generous man Harold was. Um, Without knowing it, Harold touched our lives in so many more ways than we'll ever, ever know, and we'll forever be thankful for that. Thank you, Kaylee, Brenna, and Cole, very, very much. And now I would ask if you all would join me in reading of the 23rd Psalm as we meditate more on this celebration of Harold Craven. It's in your bulletin. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me. Head oil, cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy will me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And also, would you say with me the Lord's Prayer? 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. One evening, I was sitting with Harold at the nursing home. And we talked about death in life. <clears throat> I asked him if he was afraid. He said, no, he was oh, So well, what do you want us to say about you at your service? He smiled and said, just a few appropriate remarks is all you need to say. <laughs> Harold was a quiet gentleman, a man of strong character. <clears throat> As I sat down and wrote these thoughts, <clears throat> I thought of President Lincoln and his Gettysburg Address, because it was entitled A Few Appropriate Remarks. And I could never forget that line that said, we, they may not long remember what we say here today, but they shall never forget why these men died here. I've thought so many times as I sat with Harold over many meals, church services, Sunday school classes, at his house, at my house, and we visited about the meaning of life. He again said with a smile, in my mind, that's not important. What is important is to live your life with meaning and purpose. To share with the people of the world the message of the gospel so that they will know within themselves the choices they have and they will make the right decision in their own time. And I thought how appropriate that symbolically, in a sentence, describes Harold Craven. I made of a several a list of other attributes of Harold Craven. He was kind, he was gentle, he was genteel, very diplomatic with word choices. He was quiet, loving, joyful, You've already heard one story of he loved Christmas season and his Santa collection um, was always enjoyed by children. I remember my son and daughter both loved to examine his and they would get them out. Uh, Harold and Sherilyn would both get the Santa Clauses out and uh, line them up around the room and the Christmas tree and all over the house. Um, but he was very, very joyful and enjoyed Christmas very much. He was also very peaceful. He exhibited extreme self-control. I can remember sitting with him on many occasions when the speaker was saying something very emotional and uh, angry. It made, it made you angry to hear it. And my fingers would tighten and I'd look over at Harold and he would just smile, and his fingers were totally relaxed in, in, in the seat. But he had ex extreme self-control, uh, even in emotional situations. He was hopeful. His faithfulness was unbelievable, particularly to God, to family, to friends, to Kiwana, to Kiwanis. I mean, to, to go that often to meetings and attend worldwide events uh, for so many years. He was humble, patient, and respectful.
he was a good and decent man. As life goes on, we need to support and encourage one another. I encourage each of you in the days and weeks ahead to call Sherilyn and the whole Craven family. Comfort them, encourage them, support them. I thought out loud, what legacies has Harold Craven left our community here in Warrensburg and all of Johnson County and wherever he's, he's lived? And I thought, all you have to do is look around you, even here. There are monuments in human form in the person to your left and to your right. Harold believed in people. He believed in education. He lived a life of service. Thousands of, of projects through the Kiwanis Club, through people's lives, through their businesses. He probably processed, you know, thousands and thousands of loans over 37 years at the bank and lending, encouraging someone wanting to start a new business, start over a business, or retire. Um, he probably should have been drafted into the Optimist Club because he was the eternal optimist. That there was hope for all of us and there was hope for people. He made so many contributions to the education system and scholarships and just plain encouragement in meeting young people in whatever school district you lived in, whether it was Centerview or Warrensburg or in Higginsville or Lexington or wherever. And he had lots and lots of relatives, you know, to all points north to Calgill and all of Caldwell County. Here at church, his faithfulness in attendance was fantastic. He participated, he encouraged, he supported, he assisted many, many pastors and members alike, visitors, youth camps, church camps. He was kind and encouraging to children of all ages, to the choir, to the music department, to the committee working on hymnals. And, and, of course, the organ. I remember Professor Ammon Roberson, who used to belong to this church years ago. He was so encouraged by Harold supporting uh, getting a new hymnal drafted uh, for the church and having the music department supported uh, at every service. He was also very supportive for families. And if I could be his voice and his advocate to you today, in this lifetime, in 2016, it would be to grow together, to attend church together, attend school events together, to eat your meals together, to pray together, pass on wisdom and understanding to younger generations, and have the patience for them to learn on their own and make the right choices. Harold's legacy will live on through you, through each of us. Treasure those joys, those hopes, the optimism, the quiet happiness, the brotherly love for your families, for your fellow man, for your fellow woman, and for your community for now and forever. May God bless Harold Craven in his work in the many mansions that are up yonder. For a wife, a life well lived, thou good and faithful servant. And may God bless you and each of you as you survive and carry on those inspirational goals in the days and weeks ahead. And now we'll listen as the uh, old, old path is.
was played for us together on the organ and piano. Now, if you would bow with me, our Father in heaven, at this time we would come to you and ask thy blessing upon this service, upon this congregation, upon Sherilyn and the Craven family, and each and every friend and neighbor who's come. Help us to cope, help us to remember with fond memories, all of the good and decent things that Harold shared with each of us, either directly or indirectly. Help us to learn by his example, by his model, all of the attributes that he showed us that followed your commandments and your, your word. And help us, Father, as times get tough. And if we feel like we're slipping down that rope of life and slipping and falling, help us remember to stop and tie a knot, hang on, and to turn to you for help. And that you will always be there in the kind and gentle spirit of support, encouragement, and love. as Harold's example of his life has been. Guide us, protect us, and bless us all in the days and weeks and months ahead. We pray all these blessings in thy love, in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat>